Hello, hello, my lovelies. How are you guys? I hope you guys are good. All right, so I don't know if y'all have been keeping up with the Chelsea Grimm case, but she is a 32-year-old woman from California who just was going to a wedding in Connecticut, and she wanted to drive cross-country. She was traveling alone, um, and she brought her pet bearded dragon with her that she had gotten just recently. Now, the sketchy thing is, is that her vehicle was found abandoned. On the middle of a dirt road right outside of Ashford, Virginia, or Ashford, Arizona, I'm sorry. And both the tires on the right side were flat. All of her, her cell phone, her wallet, her clothing, her sleeping bag, her pet were all gone. There was not, none of that in the vehicle. And nobody's seen or heard from her since. So let's, for those of you that are not familiar with this case, um, I got a few things for you guys to check out. So let's do that. Police in several states, they are on the lookout for a California woman who went missing during a cross country road trip. Her name is Chelsea Grimm. She left her home in San Diego on September 24th, headed for a wedding in Connecticut. She was traveling alone with the exception of her pet, bearded dragon. Remember that, the pet bearded dragon, because that sort of comes into play with this whole thing. Three days into the trip, she met up with a friend in Phoenix, Arizona. That same day, she called her parents to say the drive was taking longer than she thought, and she planned to skip the wedding and head back to San Diego. She did that part is very confusing to me because, I mean, I'm sure that she had looked to see, you know, you're driving from California to Connecticut. That's a very, very long drive. And then three days in, she said, three days in, she had made it to Arizona, but was like, this is taking too long. So I'm just going to skip the wedding and turn around and come home. Like that, something must have happened for her to do that, I would feel like. Okay. Didn't realize just how long the drive was gonna be, her mom told me. That was the last time her parents uh, actually heard from, from her. But, but it wasn't the last time Grimm was seen altogether. That night, she was spotted at a hotel in Seligman, Arizona. A witness says she seemed disoriented, uh, that she was actually trying to use euros instead of US currency. On September 28th, the police officer responding to a report of a woman acting suspiciously found Grimm in her car at a cemetery and that was in Williams, Arizona. She told him that she was working on a photography project about missing soldiers uh, and that she had gotten emotional. She told the officer she planned to camp in her car that night. And I want to show you this. Here are some of the conversation. It was recorded uh, on the officer's body cam. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you doing all right? Yeah. I just was doing a photo shoot of the lost soldiers and got a little uh, emotional so I'm I was so, crying before okay. I got back on the road. I was actually thinking of just camping for the night but I wasn't really sure exactly yet. Gotcha. Well, I didn't you, plan to be here till sunset. Okay. Just hang out here however long you want. Um, you're good to go. Awesome. Okay, so two days later, on September 30th, a woodcutter saw Grimm camping in her SUV, and that was near Ash Fork, Arizona. Uh, he said she seemed okay. On October 4th, Grimm's parents reported her missing. The next day, October 5th, hunters found Grimm's SUV. It was abandoned. It was in the middle of a dirt road, uh, and that was also outside Ash Fork, Arizona. Okay, so just so everybody is clear so far, um, she left on September 24th. She left San Diego, California, heading to Connecticut. Um, on September 27th, so three days later, she met up with a friend in Arizona. That same day, she called her mom. So three days later, she called her mom and said, you know, it's too, it's too much. I'm not making this drive. I'm turning around and I'm coming home. That night, she was spotted at a hotel in Seligman, Arizona.
hinted and that she was trying to use euros instead of U.S. currency. So, you know, I just wonder, and I'm not stating anything here. I'm just curious, is, is there a history of uh, drug usage in this case? Is there a history of mental illness in this case? Um, is there, you know what I'm saying? Like it, like it, it just seems very weird. Like why was she trying to use euros instead of U.S. currency, right? And it, they said she seemed very disoriented and out of it. The next day, <clears throat> she talked to a police officer after he responded to a report of a woman acting suspiciously at a cemetery. On the 30th, the woodcutter saw her camping in her SUV um, near Ash Fork, Arizona. She wasn't reported missing until the 4th. October 5th, so think about that. So September 30th, a woodcutter saw her camping in her SUV near Ash Fork, okay, September 30th. Now on October 5th, Five days later, hunters found her SUV abandoned in the middle of a dirt road, in the middle of the road, though, not even like pulled over to the side, in the middle of the road, um, right outside of Ash Fork. So in those five days, she hadn't traveled anywhere else. She was still in Ash Fork, Arizona. So it really does make you wonder, like, what happened in those five days? Okay, now let's move on. Uh, where she had spoken again to that woodcutter that was five days earlier. This is what's very strange. Both tires on the right side of the SUV, they were flat. Her cell phone, her wallet, clothing, and sleeping bag were not in the car. And again, this is important, neither was her pet bearded dragon, who she had gotten pretty recently. We're going to hear more about that in a second. Earlier today, uh, I spoke with Chelsea's parents, Janet and Stephen Grimm. I uh, hear some of that conversation. <laughs> Can you talk to us a little bit about her itinerary? Was her plan to drive all the way from California to, to Connecticut? Was it sort of like a, a road trip she was looking forward to? Actually, she was originally going to fly, but because of she had recently acquired a bearded dragon as a pet and the airlines wouldn't let her take that animal on the plane. So she, the day that she was supposed to fly east, for this wedding, she called and said, I'm going to drive across the country. And she said, I've packed my car, I have my tent, I have my sleeping bag. Um, I might spend, spend a couple of nights in a hotel, I might camp, I'm gonna sort of see how it goes. And three days later, I mean, we talked to her in, in between, but three days later she said, I'm only as far as Arizona, I just don't think I can do this by myself, which we had tried to explain in the beginning, but. Um, she said, so I think I'm going to just skip the wedding and stay here for a couple of days and do a little camping. And then, you know, she made it sound like she was going to head back to San Diego. Saw Which, the picture you know. of the, uh, the bearded dragon. Um, was she, did she have an adventurous spirit? I'm just thinking like that's a long drive and the camping was, was it out of the ordinary for her to sort of be spontaneous? I'd say, I'd say yes and no. Um, she was spontaneous. She changed plans a lot. This wasn't the first time she ever changed a plan, for sure. Um, the magnitude of this adventure, quote unquote, of driving across the country um, was a lot, uh, even for Chelsea. And we, you know, we said we thought that was too much. And if she wanted, you know, we'd help her fly from Phoenix home, or, you know, she had a friend in Phoenix that she could leave her car with. We gave her, you know, a bunch of options, um, but uh, this, this she seemed intent on this once she had chosen it. What made you report her missing? Like, when, when did you start to get the feeling that something was wrong? Well, we last talked to Chelsea on the 27th in the afternoon and she said i'm going to camp for a couple of days and so i'm going to be probably where i'm not going to have cell service and so for a couple of days we didn't even think about it again because she was she had told us she would be offline and we knew she was in a you know in arizona where the there are spots where it's not particularly well 
uh, good for communication. So it was after a couple more days after that, that we started thinking this is too long for a camping trip and she should be back. She should be somewhere where she can get in touch. And so on the 4th of October, we reported her missing and on the 5th, they found her car in Arizona. He had met up with a friend in Phoenix, I, I believe. Um, have you talked to that person? Were, were they able to give any information about sort of her state of mind or what was going on? Yes, actually, our other daughter talked to her at great length, and she shared a couple of emails. Um, and she said that they had had, she, they gotten together, and they had had um, a nice visit at her house. And Chelsea and she were going to brunch the next day, but the next day when um, it got to closer to time for brunch, Chelsea said, I'm going to, I need to go, I need to go change plans. So she, she did with this other friend. Did the friend have any information about like any reason to be concerned or did it just seem like a normal um, hangout? Not, not particularly. Yeah, no alarm bells or anything. I mean, she says um, they had a nice visit and she was looking forward to seeing her the next day. So um, can't really explain that any better. Oh, she said she was doing a photo project I think in a cemetery when she um, interacted with that police officer. Do you know anything more about that? Was was she, you know, a photographer? Can you shed light on that a little bit? Well, she she did photography a, a lot, and she also did um, paintings, rendered art, uh, to supplement her income, whatever her income was. And so it's not at all unusual for her to have been doing a story or a photojournalist story for some, you know, whatever publication so that's not unusual um i being in the cemetery is you know i guess if you're doing a story on lost soldiers that maybe there's that's a good place to, to look i think she also had a strong affinity to her um, grandfather Jan janet's dad who was a world war ii veteran and i you know Perhaps that was a, a, a draw to the veterans there. Yeah. Uh, have you been able to see that body camera video? I, I think it was on. Did yes. anything seem out of the ordinary, or did she just? I mean, you not seem bad anyone. Did she see myself in the video? Couldn't see much of her. We just heard her voice. That sounded like it was definitely her, in my opinion. Um, no, it didn't seem, you know, out of the ordinary. And one thing that seemed very in the ordinary or in character was how I think she said, I appreciate your compassion or something like that. Um, that sounded 110% like Chelsea. She was, she's a very compassionate, empathetic person, um, kind of an artist at heart. And that sounded just like her. She had an interaction with a woodcutter also. Have you been able to get any more information about that? I know that I know the authorities have talked to him, or I believe it's a male. Um, we don't have anything um, particularly noteworthy to add on that, except he thought she did not seem, you know, in distress or in need. He actually went back. Um, some short time later to make sure she uh, didn't want help. And she, again, a second time uh, declined his help. So his conclusion was that she she was in pretty good shape, not, you know, not not worrisome. Well, it sounds like the bearded dragon was important to her, obviously, if she was going to drive across the country and not fly. Um, the bearded dragon was not found with the car. Does that make you think that she went somewhere uh, and and took took the pet with her? You know, I mean, is 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 that sort of a, a good sign to you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she feels Chelsea has always had special part, spot in her heart for children, elderly people, and animals. And okay, now I want to pause it right there for a second. Um, 
No, see, if the car, I feel like if the car had been pulled off onto the side of the road, right, or maybe even off off the road and onto the grass right there, um, because it was a back road, it was a dirt road, right? So she could have, I mean, easily you could say, yeah, she could have pulled off there, gotten her stuff out of the car and went out into the woods and went camping somewhere because she did say she wanted to go do a couple days of camping. Um, however, her car being left in the middle of the road, that's what really makes you worry. Like it could have been anything. Could somebody have tried to hijack her, you know, or not her vehicle, obviously, but her, right? And even if you, you know, say she pulled, she was on the road and she realized she had flat tires. So she was like, okay, well, I'll walk, you know, as far as I can until I can get some help. I mean, that was how long ago? And nobody, you know, there was no ever, no tow trucks called, no nothing. So, I mean, it does, I I think there's a lot of worrying here. Like, I, I, I think there's a lot of reason to work. I don't think you should get overly involved at this point and let your mind go into very negative places because, you know, as parents, that's where your mind wants to go, right? It's to the worst of the worst. Um, but it, there's just a lot of things here that are very, very, you know, scary and sketchy all at the same time. She would never leave an animal in a car. She just wouldn't do it. So I think that that is a hopeful sign. I also think that, um, the chances of people recognizing Chelsea or at least sort of connecting the dots. If they see somebody with a bearded dragon, they're gonna take an extra look at that person because it's unusual to be carrying around a bearded dragon, usually on her shoulder. It would definitely stand out. So that's a good thing for people to look out for. <laughs> right, right. She also had a very distinctive tattoo on her left arm, which was um, a vine with leaves on it that sort of wrapped all the way around her lower arm. So another visual clue. Have police given you any other information? I mean, is, is there anything else people watching this should be on the lookout for or in a certain area? Or are there any um, other tidbits that they've been able to give you? I wish there were. Um, there's, there is a chance she got a, a ride out of there. She seemed to have left that car of her own volition in an organized way was locked. She had taken her wallet and we think her phone and her sleeping bag, among other things, along with the bearded dragon. So um, the reason I mentioned that is the area of, po of possibilities where she could be is pretty wide. It's a wide net. So, you know, surrounding states have been notified, not just Arizona. The surrounding states, the, the uh, authorities in Coconino County have been terrific in helping get the word out. Um, and so even if you're, you know, several hours away from there as a viewer and you've seen something that you think might be uh, any kind of tip, uh, we would be forever grateful if that's, that's an important clue. Um, time is of the essence. And so any, you know, anything that leads to, um, Progress would be awesome. Gosh, you really uh, have to feel um, for those parents and what they're going through right now. And, and Janet and Stephen, they have hired a private investigator to help them with the search for their daughter. Uh, and Kelly Townsend joins me now uh, on the phone. Um, Kelly, um, it, it's, a, it's a strange case, um, hard to wrap my mind around. I was trying to go over all the details today and the timeline and the fact that the car was found. Um, and that she's missing with the bearded dragon. H have you been able to piece anything together yet? I mean, do you think that she is is likely still in Arizona at this point? Well, that's very difficult to tell right now. I mean, the circumstances, you're right, uh, they are um, bizarre. Uh, you know, I mean, in the body cam video of the law enforcement officer talking to her, uh, I just recently been, my, my agency just recently been brought on uh, but I have an interest in, he recommended for her to go to Love's and I'm working with the uh, Coconino law enforcement right now and trying to find out, has anybody gone there 
to check out the CCTV because if she actually mm. followed the officer's advice and was camping there or just sleeping in her car there, did she get approached? And I know the loves, um, those loves uh, gas stations, I guess, truck driver stations, they um, have places where people can sleep. Truck drivers do it all the time, you know, showers and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, I'm right now, we're just trying to gather as much information as we can. Coconino County Sheriff's Department has been outstanding working with us. Uh, some law enforcement departments, they don't work with you just because you're a private investigator. Uh, but because uh, I'm, I'm interested because there was two flat tires, it was out on a dirt road. How far was the uh, body cam? Okay, now I just want to show you this. So see right here, this is her car in the middle of the road. Okay, where it was in the middle of the road. Now, let me go back two seconds to where you see it on the side of the road, right here. That's the wrong side of the road. So they must have moved the vehicle off the road and put it over here because it's the left side of the road. You know what I'm saying? Flat tires, it was out on a dirt road. How far was the... Uh body cam video where she was talked to by the police there to where the car was found, you know, I mean, because did somebody interact with her and then they drove down that road? I mean, it, it, we're, we're all assuming at this point right now because nobody really knows for sure except God. Um, so, you know, right. I mean, that, 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 that's where we are right now. We have had some interesting things come to light just as of today. Uh, matter of fact, just a few hours ago, that we're working on that could really generate stuff that we're probably going to want to get out on the news if it, if it, if it comes to fruition, because we may have something that uh, we want the world to look out for. Yeah. I would imagine when you start asking questions and, and like you said, around that gas station, first of all, the thought of a young woman sleeping alone with just a bearded dragon in a gas station parking lot makes me a little nervous. Uh, well, can you absolutely. share a little more about um, what you what you've discovered in the last couple of hours, or you know, give us? I a, really a, can't a at this bit. point. I, I really can't because uh, number one, we have to verify. Number two, we have to interview. I mean, these people literally just came up on the radar today, um, and so we're we're trying to uh, get interviews set up and uh, composite sketches and things like that. The tidbit about her trying to use, I think it was like euros instead of dollars and, and possibly being disoriented. Um, do you know anything more about that? Because her, you know, her, her parents, you know, told me, you know, she was an artist. It wasn't odd for her to be in the cemetery taking pictures as part of her art project. Um, you know, it, it just seems strange to me that there was that one account that maybe she was like disoriented at one point. Yeah, you know, right now I can't say that uh, I would verify that with you right now. I mean, I thought it was a little odd where she was crying, but she, you know, law, the law enforcement officer walked up to her and she was crying. And he asked her and she said it's because she just took pictures at the, the graveyard and she was weeping for the soldiers. I don't know. I've never personally met Chelsea, but she seems like a nice heart, a uh, very compassionate girl. But was she actually crying and just saying that to law enforcement? You, you follow what I'm Sam. Right. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, or perhaps she was moved by the uh, by the art project she was working on. We'll we'll stay in touch. We, we want to stay on this story, and uh, I'm glad that you're involved and in, and assist the family. I know you just came on. I think it yeah. is. Yeah, I feel for those parents. I just want to put out the phone number. Anyone with information, um, you can contact the sheriff's office there. Uh, the number is nine two eight seven seven four four five two three. Um, hopefully, uh, we will have some good news to report sometime this week because she. Yeah, so it's it's very crazy. I know it's very early on. I mean, it's not really early on. It's not because she was reported missing on October 4th. Her parents said the last time they actually talked to her was September 27th. So, I mean, that's a long time to go without talking to somebody, 
you know, or talking to your family for sure. Okay, now let me pull this up. forgotten people in this country yeah no i get it <laughs> i'm trying to do a series on the lost and the forgotten people in this country yeah no i get it now missing herself this body camera video is one of the last known sightings of chelsea grimm a california woman who vanished i'm not very well as every day goes by it's harder and harder to stay positive and upbeat and we try to keep focused on the end goal, which is to bring Chelsea home safely. What started as a cross-country road trip quickly turned into a parent's worst nightmare when 32-year-old Chelsea Grimm went missing without a trace. Her parents now left with more questions than answers in their desperate search for their daughter. It's a nightmare, and it's one that you never could have imagined yourself in and wouldn't wish on anybody. But having said that, we're hanging in there. We're holding on to hope, putting our faith in, uh, in the law enforcement uh, professionals. Grimm was last seen on September 30th in Ash Fork, Arizona, about 50 minutes west of Flagstaff. Just days before, she'd set off on a cross-country road trip, leaving San Diego headed to Connecticut for a family member's wedding. Grimm's mother, Janet Grimm, says just before she was set to fly out east, her daughter made a last minute change of plans. Chelsea was going to fly home for a wedding um, on the, in Connecticut, well, New York. She was flying home to go to this wedding and see us. And the day she was supposed to be on the airplane, she emailed Steve and said that she was going to drive across country instead. And so that was on the 24th of September. Chelsea's father, Stephen Grimm, says it wasn't surprising his daughter made this last minute change. Um, I would say it's not at all out of character for her to change plans at the last minute. Um, that was a characteristic of her. Um, she had adopted this um, yeah. dragon lizard, bearded dragon. Bearded dragon. Uh, she had adopted a bearded dragon and said she didn't want to come without it. And you can't, and she couldn't bring it on the plane. So that ostensibly was the reason um, that she gave us. Alone, traveling only with her bearded dragon, Grimm set off toward the East Coast. But several days into her trip, she told her parents she wouldn't make it in time for the wedding. That conversation and update was the last time her parents heard from her. The last contact, we, we were texting back and forth with her, and she said, I've driven for three days. I'm in Arizona. I'm not going to make it to the East Coast for the wedding. I think I'm going to just skip the wedding and stop here for a day or two and do some camping. She had her tent and her sleeping bag with her in the car when she left. And then radio silence. And we, she had told us she was going to probably be out of fun range for a couple of days. So a couple of days, it wasn't, we weren't alarmed. But then when Two or three more days went by, and we usually texted or talked to her daily. So when a couple of days went by and we hadn't heard from her, I, we got really worried. So we called um, it in as a missing persons report on the 4th of October. Investigators confirmed one of her last encounters was with law enforcement on the 28th. Body camera video shows an officer approach Chelsea's vehicle outside of a cemetery. are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I just was doing a photo shoot of the lost soldiers and got a little emotional, so I'm I was so... crying before okay. I got back on the road. Chelsea can be heard telling the officer she's a bit emotional after working on a photo shoot about fallen soldiers. Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure someone called it in. So I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're quite all right. I mean, this... I was just doing a photo shoot. Yeah, um, packed up. I'm going to leave soon. Okay. But I just didn't want to drive like that. Sad. I got you. You've been smoking a little bit of marijuana? Um, earlier today, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Do you have your license on you by any chance? Yeah.
gets me all emotional too. Yeah, it's just, you know, um, I'm trying to do a series on the lost and the forgotten. Now, I wanted to pause it right here for a second. Now, I know that she has been <clears throat> on the road. Obviously, you can't shower. I get all that, okay? But look how dirty her arms are, right? Like, it's, I don't know. Like, they're, it, like it's very dirty. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not being rude here. I'm just trying to point things out. Like, what, you know, was she doing in there or out there? Like, that she could get so dirty. And the next thing that I actually wanted to say was when they last showed that picture of her purse, or of her bearded dragon, sitting on top of her purse. So, she's a smoker, right? So, if nothing nefarious, if nothing bad happened to her, I feel like, now this is just my opinion as a smoker, like she would have to stop somewhere and get cigarettes. You, you would just have to, Okay. So is she, you know, I, I wonder, like, are they checking all the surrounding gas stations, stores, all of that? Because she would have had to have gone in to get more cigarettes unless she brought like a carton with her. You know what I'm saying? That's just something I just wanted to mention real quick. People in this country. She later discusses where to stay while she's on the road before parting ways with the officer. Um, I know you told me that you, you smoked marijuana and you're kind of, well, obviously I would be in an emotional state as well. I don't know if you want somebody else to drive you or if you just want to um, hang out here for a little bit longer, you're more than welcome to do that. Yeah. If it's okay with you to, yeah. if I hang out here for another like 15 or 20 and then head on the road, that would be my plan. Sure. I think. Yeah. I don't see any signs of impairment or anything like that. So yeah, no, I, that's, I just, I mean, with my, with my eyesight and then crying, it's not the best combination at night. I, I, totally <laughs> I was understand. like, I'm just going to like cry on the road or i'm just gonna sit here and cry so i i got have you. my dragon and i'm just oh gonna... that's freaking cool i didn't even notice that thanks rosie wow rosie i that's... think she's asleep wow right on she got bored yeah uh do you have like a hotel around here or anything i don't i was actually thinking of just camping for the night but i wasn't really sure exactly yet gotcha well, i didn't you... plan to be here till sunset okay you can't camp in the city limits it's kind of like a city statute we have okay good but job. you can always go i don't know if you can see like the, the yellow lights over there the loves it's a trucker stop in, okay. in the gas station area. You can just sleep there. Nobody, oh, will, nobody will bother you. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Get some good shots at sunrise too there. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. sunrise here too. Uh, if you ever want to take photo shoots of like the statues in the morning, you know, it's, it's really cool because the sun like rises right behind them. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll probably stay at the truck stop then, save some money and then Boom. come over for the sunrise. You got it. Cool. All right. Well, well you have a great time. Well, she was very into photography. So, and she was had been doing. She had done some articles and some photography in San Diego as part of the way she was supporting herself. And so, it, to hear that she was doing a story on lost veterans was not is not unusual. Um, I don't know the circumstances under which she was taking pictures in a graveyard. At I mean, her arms in that in that picture, her arm, it actually looked like she had been maybe in the dirt at some point, like whether it be laying in the dirt, digging in the dirt, something. Her arm was just very, very dirty. At night, so I, I really don't make anything of it because I, it would be pure speculation. The last known sighting of Grimm was two days later on September 30th in Ash Fork, Arizona, about 20 miles away from Williams. A woodcutter there saw her camping in her car and asked if she was okay. Grimm said she was doing fine, but she hasn't been heard from since. Her parents say it was normal for their daughter to camp alone. She has had a lot of training in camping and she it's something that she has done in the past. She hasn't done it recently since she's moved to San Diego, but, um, well, actually she had done it in August. She had gone camping in August, but uh, up until then, I, I mean, I wouldn't really characterize her as an outdoor girl, a wilderness kind of person, but she certainly had the skills to do that. Prior to her disappearance, Grimm's parents say she went through a breakup and that her mental state was off. 
I would say yes, but I, I also think it's fair to say she didn't seem completely um, even. She seemed pretty uneven. Okay, see, I hadn't heard that part before. So she had actually just gone through a breakup recently, and mentally she was just a little bit off, her dad said. She was not even keeled. She was a little bit off. So, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. That last day or two. What do you mean by uneven? Could you give me more about that? Um, just that she was, um, she had a lot on her mind that she was um, expressing through texts that she was taking into her phone as she was um, traveling. And, you know, she was upset with uh, a, a boy she was dating. She was scared of him. We feel like she was running away from him. And, um, I think overall, you know, that was affecting a lot of her mindset. They had broken up and, um, you know, was upset with uh, a, a boy she was dating. She was scared of him. We feel like she was running away from him. And um, I think overall, you know, that was affecting a lot of her mindset. They had broken up. And, um, you know, he had posted things on social media, et cetera. So they're very well aware of him. But as to Chelsea's state of mind, I think it was affected by him. Okay, now he said that she was a little bit afraid of him. They had broken up, but mentally he, you know, was weighing on her. And so, okay. Okay. I would see, I was waiting for something like that. Like there had to have been something, right? So I have to do a little bit more of looking into him. Now, did he, now I'm not saying anything here, but I'm just thinking out loud with you guys. Um, you know, did he know that she was going on this cost country trip? Like what, what kind of person was he? Was he very controlling, very, um, you know, if I can't have you, no one can. You guys know what I'm saying. I know, I'm not saying he was because I have no idea. But he did start a GoFundMe when she went missing, which is a little bit sketchy in my opinion. Okay, so let's finish that. I'll let you guys finish this. And, and their breakup or or the way they departed. But Stephen Grimm says he doesn't believe his daughter would hurt herself. It's not inconceivable, but we really don't think that was her state of mind when you look at what she was saying to us and that sort of thing. You know, it's not impossible. It's not, it, it has not been ruled out, but um, you know, they've done a very, very thorough search of a three mile radius around where the car was found. And so one would think that if he had come to the worst, a very, very thorough search of possible, it's not, it, it has not been ruled out, but, um, you know, they've done a very, very thorough search of a three mile radius around. His daughter would hurt herself. It's not inconceivable, but we really don't think that was her state of mind when you look at what she was saying to us and that sort of thing. You know, it's not impossible. It's not, it, it has not been ruled out. But, um, you know, they've done a very, very thorough search of a three mile radius around where the car was found. And so one would think that if she had come to the worst, we would have have found some evidence of that by now. There have been hunters, loggers, there have been the, the search parties, et cetera. So, um, you know, our best, our hunch, our gut is that, you know, maybe she got a ride out of there. That's what we're kind of hoping. One day after Grimm was reported missing on October 5th, hunters in the Kabub National Forest came across her vehicle, a 2019 Ford Escape with two flat tires. Hold up. Did they just say 
that her car was found in the national, in a national forest. Are you freaking kidding me? Hunters in the Cape of National Forest came across her vehicle, a 2019 Ford Escape with two full tires. It had been parked on Okay, so her camera was left in the car, and this is the last picture she had taken of herself. Now, she does look very upset in this picture. She looks like she has been crying in this picture. Pictures showing the outfit she was last seen in. The car was locked. It was neat, so there were no visual signs of a struggle. And um, it's possible that she just decided that she was going to proceed with her camping. She couldn't do anything right then and there about the car. So she perhaps was just going to continue on the idea of camping. Um, she has she has a triple A card on our family plan. So we had told her when she started driving across the country, if you have encounter any car problems, use triple A, get towed, and tell us what you know, the situation is keep us apprised of your whereabouts. So that I would, if she, if she didn't call AAA, it's because she either didn't have service or her phone wasn't working. And she hasn't, I mean, her phone has not been used since the 28th or 9th. So it's either lost, broken, not charged. It, I don't know. But Normally, you would be using something like that to call for help. Investigators combed through the area where her vehicle was found both by land and air. During all searches, investigators came up empty. They had uh, mentioned on, on a call we had with them Friday that they had 500 man hours in the field looking for her. Um, they've been very scientific technology being used with mapping, etc. So I feel like we've got real professionals who are truly trying uh, the very best to find her and we're grateful for that and yet th there are not that many new clues so understandably it goes to a slightly different level of immediacy for them and it just seemed to us like it couldn't hurt to uh, hire Kelly Townsend who we hired um, he specializes in missing persons so um, Maybe there's something he can do to supplement them. We're not experts in this field. We're totally unexperienced. The Grimm family has since acquired a private investigator they hope will move the case forward. Presumably the sheriff's office has a lot of other things going on simultaneously. And I think after two weeks of extensive searching for Chelsea, they're sort of waiting for more public information, waiting for more clues because they followed up everything that they really had to look into. And I think that they've done a thorough job doing that. As the search for Grimm continues, her parents have a message for their daughter. Just that we miss her tremendously and we can't bear being parted like this and we really want to have her come home. We love you, Chelsea. We can't wait to see you again. So let us know where you are and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll go from there. Arizona officials say the investigation into Grimm's disappearance is still ongoing and ask anyone with more information to contact the Coconino County Sheriff's Office. Okay, I mean, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very scary, very. Mm. Okay, now we saw the cop cam body footage. Now I want it, let me see if I can. Um, yeah, so, okay, now let me pull up this GoFundMe that was found. 
created by her ex, which makes me very nervous. Philip Brenner, PJ Brenner is what they what his, what they call him. Okay, I don't have time for this. Okay. So now let me read this. This was created for well, now it would be five days ago, I think. I am Philip Chelsea Grimm's fiance. They had just broken up. So I don't know if this is a fake GoFundMe account. I don't know what the hell is going on. But this is what it says. It's very, it's very weird. I am Philip, Chelsea Grimm's fiance. We have lived together for eight months and known each other for years. I am extremely close and she is my other half. She has been missing since 28th of September and her car was found October 5th left out of gas with flat tire on a side road by Ash Fork, Arizona. Now, they never said her car was out of gas. They just said she had two flat tires. In the dispersed camping areas, she was only supposed to be gone for a week. She is the most amazing woman I've ever met, and she's the love of my life, and I'm so scared. I am here with the people. I am here with people with ATVs and drones, and I came in our truck from Ocean Beach last night and some friends looking for her, spreading flyers around and finding clues to her abrupt disappearance. So he is, if this is him, he is saying that he is in the area, which is very, very creepy. I have spent several thousand, I have spent several thousand getting people here and for gas and things like binoculars and would like to push efforts to do the most and donation is what I, what is driving this. Please help find my baby girl. I miss her so much. I want to know what happened. She was supposed to be camping. Now she's gone. There are no clues or anyone seeing her after her car was left. Although there are a few people saw her right before, including a police interaction <clears throat> at a cemetery she was photographing and a gas station clerk. She took some photos and said, I'm going into nature and it's been two weeks. It is expensive to search and I am putting 100% of what I have into finding her. Our goal is 30000 Wow. Because this may be ongoing and we need to be prepared to spend this amount of money. It needs to escalate quickly. Me and my best friend, Elias, are here in Williams. We did an interview with Williams Grand Canyon News at 4.50 p.m. on October 13th, 2023. It's my birthday today. Let's find her. Facebook share and Instagram post, please, for Chelsea. I am very emotional right now. This is me right now. I'm sorry if I say too much or not enough. Feel free to contact me with any information. Direct message me, Philip or Elias, Evelinita, or any, and I mean any, social media platform. Here's the phone number. I will answer every request immediately. I am doing the most for her as she would, as she would for me or any of you. She is an angel. God bless and Godspeed. But her parents did not say they were engaged. Her parents said they actually just recently broke up. So I don't know what is going on with this. I don't know any, like I've tried to look Philip up on um, Instagram to try to get into contact with him because, you know, just to get a kind of a background on, on her and what's going on, yada, yada, yada. But I have not been able to find it. Not the correct one anyway. There are a lot of Philip Brenners out there, but I want to share that with you guys. So I'm definitely going to stay on top of this. I hope and pray she's found. Listen, just because she's in her 30s doesn't mean she doesn't need attention. Something is very sketchy here. So definitely want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Please hit that thumbs up. Please sub to the channel. Please consider becoming a member and joining the family. If you want to do more, the links are all down in the description below. I love you guys. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay safe. Keep asking those hard questions. Keep spreading that light. And I will see you all next time. Let's help bring Chelsea home.